Hi, this is Shay Jackson with Height Math, and in today's video, we will be going over the fourth grade star reading test prep, story number one. Let's get started. The story we will be reviewing and also answering questions for is called A Caterpillar's Tail by Christine Allison. A caterpillar had crawled up on a twig. It looked the twig over, then fastened itself tightly to it by its hind legs and began twisting itself and moving its head up and down. Every time the caterpillar's head moved, it left behind something that looked like a glistening thread of silk. An ant crawling nearby stopped and looked in wonder. What in the world are you doing? I'm making a house, the caterpillar said as it paused to rest for a moment. A bee that had lighted close by began to buzz with laughter. <laughs> Will you tell me, if you please? What sort of house that is, he cried. The only sort of house I know how to make, the caterpillar answered humbly. I've never heard of anything so absurd. Why don't you hunt about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and live in that? Then you would be safe. Or you might find a hole under a stone, said the ant. That's a very good place. The caterpillar shook its head. Then it set to work again. The bee and ant went on their way. A poor sort of house indeed, each one thought. Up and down, the caterpillar's head moved weaving and weaving. Now the silk was like a thin silvery veil. Through the veil, you could still faintly see the caterpillar moving. At last, the veil grew so thick that you could only guess that the caterpillar might still be at work inside. The bee came by that way again and stopped to look at the little house. Then it flew down to the ant hill. Miss Ant, come out here, it buzzed. I have such a joke to tell you. That caterpillar we were watching has finished its house and has forgot to leave any door. That's too bad, said the ant. I'm afraid it will starve. But the caterpillar did not die. It was not even hungry. It was fast asleep in its little cocoon house, knowing not whether the sun shone or the rain beat down. It was snug and dark inside. Many days and nights passed, and at last, what had once been the caterpillar began to stir and wake. How strange I feel, said the thing to itself. I must have light and air. One end of the cocoon was very soft and loose, and through this end, what was once the caterpillar pushed its way out. How weak it felt. Fastened to it on each side were two crumbled wet things, which it began to move feebly up and down. As it moved them, it felt its strength returning and the crumpled things began to spread and dry. Broader and broader they spread until they were strong, velvety wings, two on each side. They were a lovely soft brown color with a pinkish border along the edges. 
in the middle of each of the lower wings was a glistening spot like the eye on a peacock's feather. This thing was no caterpillar. It was a beautiful winged moth. Presently, it spread its wings and floated softly down to the earth. It did not fly far, for it had not its full strength yet. As it happened, it alighted on the anthill, where the ant was busy hunting for food. It stopped its work to stare with awe at the wonderful stranger. You beautiful thing, said the ant. Where did you come from? Don't you remember the caterpillar that made its house on the twig above? Oh yes, poor thing. It must have died long ago. I am the caterpillar, said the moth gently, as the ant looked at it in wonder. Just then, the bee who had laughed at the caterpillar's house buzzed by and heard the news. Well, well, it said. So that, so that was what you were about, growing wings in your strange house? The moth stirred itself and said, Now I must go and find a shelter under a rock or in some hollow tree until the sun goes down. But tonight, ah, tonight, I shall come out to fly wherever I like and it waved its great wings and flew softly out of sight. The ant and bee sat looking after it. And to think, cried the bee, that I didn't understand what the caterpillar was doing. I suppose everyone knows his own business best. That was a great story. So let's look at question number one. The caterpillar's actions while building its cocoon support the idea that it is A, too impatient to argue with the ant and the bee. B, confused by the questions the ant and bee are asking. C, unconcerned about what the ant and the bee think about its house, D, afraid to show the ant and the bee the best way to make a house. So again, question number one says, the caterpillar's actions while building its cocoon support the idea that it is. So think back to when the caterpillar was building its cocoon, okay? Let's review a little bit of the story. This is uh, paragraph two, three, and four. I like the picture of the caterpillar as well, by the way. Starting with paragraph two, an ant crawling nearby stopped and looked in wonder. What in the world are you doing? I'm making a house, the caterpillar said, as it paused to rest for a moment. A bee that had lighted close by began to buzz with laughter. <laughs> Will you tell me, if you please, what sort of house that is, he cried. Let's also look at paragraphs 5 to 11. The only sort of house I know how to make, the caterpillar answered humbly. I never heard of anything so absurd. Why don't you hunt about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and live in that? Then you would be safe. Or you might find a hole under a stone, said the ant. That's a very good place. The caterpillar shook its head. Then it set to work again. The bee and ant went on their way. A poor sort of house indeed, each one thought. Up and down, the caterpillar's head moved, weaving and weaving. Now the silk was like a thin silvery veil. Through the veil, you could still faintly see the caterpillar moving. Okay, so I think that based on what we've read, we can answer our question. So let's take a look at it again. 
The caterpillar's actions while building its cocoon support the idea that it is A, too impatient to argue with the ant and the bee, B, confused by the questions the ant and the bee are asking, C, unconcerned about what the ant and the bee think about its house, or D, afraid to show the ant and the bee the best way to make a house. So based on the paragraphs that we read, what answer choice do you think is correct? If you said C, you are correct, or you are right. Even though the ant and the bee had something to say about the caterpillar's house, it didn't stop him. Unconcerned meaning that he wasn't bothered. It didn't matter what they were saying or what they thought. It continued to build its cocoon anyway. Let's look at question number two. Which sentence does the author use to suggest what the caterpillar has experienced an important change? F, up and down, the caterpillar's head moved, weaving and weaving. G, at last, the veil grew so thick that you could only guess that the caterpillar might still be at work inside. H, but the caterpillar did not die. Or J, many days and nights passed, and at last what had once been the caterpillar began to stir and wake. So let's look at our question again. Which sentence does the author use to suggest that the caterpillar has experienced an important change? Look at your answer choices one more time, and then we'll give a hint. So the hint is, many days and nights passed, and at last, what had once been the caterpillar began to stir and wake. How strange I feel, said the thing to itself. I must have light and air. Let's look at our answer choices again and see what do you think is the correct answer. If you said J, you are correct. Many days and nights pass and at last what had once been, and that's key, what had once been the caterpillar began to stir and wake. So this is the information that helps us to determine that something that suggests that the caterpillar experienced an important change, okay? It said what had once been the caterpillar. So if it's not the caterpillar anymore, that means something changed, okay? Let's move to question number three. Which of the following is the best summary of paragraphs one through nine? A, an ant and a bee see a caterpillar making a house. Both of them talk to the caterpillar while it works to finish its task, the only way it knows how. B, a caterpillar is making a house out of something like silk on a twig. The house is called a cocoon, and it takes a long time to make. C, a caterpillar is making a house for itself. An ant and a bee suggest better places for the caterpillar to live, but the caterpillar continues with its task. And finally, D, an ant and a bee watch a caterpillar making a house. They think the caterpillar is having trouble, so they suggest different places for it to live. And again, we want to find what answer is the best summary of paragraphs one through nine. What does summary mean? That means in a couple of sentences, in one or two sentences, 
if you could tell uh, someone what the story was about in one or two sentences, which answer would you choose? So let's look at paragraphs one to nine to see what would be the best summary of the story. A caterpillar had crawled up on a twig. It looked the, the twig over, then fastened itself tightly to, to it by its hind legs and began twisting itself and moving its head up and down. Every time the caterpillar's head moved, it left behind something that looked like a glistening thread of silk. An ant crawling nearby stopped and looked in wonder. What in the world are you doing? I'm making a house, the caterpillar said as it paused to rest for a moment. A bee that had lighted close by began to buzz with laughter. Will you tell me, if you please, what sort of house that is, he cried. The only, the only sort of house I know how to make, the caterpillar answered humbly. I never heard of anything so absurd. Why don't you hunt about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and live in that? Then you would be safe. Or you might find a hole under a stone, a stone, said the ant. That's a very good place. The caterpillar shook its head. Then it set to work again. The bee and the ant went on their way. A poor sort of house indeed, each one thought. Okay, so let's go back to our problem again. Question number three. Which of the following is the best summary of the par of paragraphs one through nine? Take a moment and think about what we just read and look at the answer choices to see which one is the best summary, not close to it, but the best summary that if someone had never read the story and you just wanted to give them a, um, basic idea of what paragraphs one through nine is about, you are about, I'm sorry, what uh, paragraphs one and nine are about, you would choose this statement. Let's look at the answer choices. A, an ant and a bee. C, a caterpillar making a house. Both of them talk to the caterpillar while it works to finish its task the only way it knows how. B, a caterpillar is making a house out of something like a like silk on a twig. The house is called a, co co a cocoon and it takes a long time to make. C, a caterpillar is making a house for itself. An ant and a bee suggest better places for the caterpillar to live, but the caterpillar continues with its task. D. An ant and a bee watch a caterpillar making a house. They think the caterpillar is having trouble, so they suggest different places for it to live. Which one do you believe is the best summary? And these are pretty close, but there's one answer that is the best. That means the absolute best um, summary that you could give someone concerning paragraphs one through nine. What do you think it is? If you said C, you are correct. Okay. If you said C, you are correct. And again, A, B, and D, they were kind of close, but the best summary, the absolute best summary for paragraphs one through nine is that the caterpillar was making a house and the ant and the bee, they made uh, suggestions of better places for the caterpillar to live, but they were making suggestions based on where they would live, okay? But the caterpillar, regardless of what the ant and the bee were saying, it continued with this task. So again, C is the correct answer. Did you get it correct? Let's move to question number four. In paragraph six, 
The word absurd means F silly, G messy, H difficult, J gloomy. So again, in paragraph six, what does that word absurd mean? So let's look at paragraph six to see if we can use context clues to find the right answer, okay? Paragraph six says, I never heard of anything so absurd. Why don't you hunt about and find a hollow tree or get or a good hive and live in that? Then you will be safe. So could absurd in this sentence mean silly or messy or difficult or gloomy? And if you can't guess or if you don't know for sure, this is a good way to find the answer. Replace the answer choices with the word absurd. So let's do an example. I never heard of anything so silly. Why don't you hunt about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and live in that? Does that sound like a good answer choice? Let's look at G. I've never heard of anything so messy. Why don't you hunt about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and live in that? Does messy sound correct? H, difficult. I've never heard of anything so difficult. Why don't you hunt about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and live in that? And J, I've never heard of anything so gloomy. Why don't you hunt about and find a hollow tree or a good hive and live in that? Which answer choices sounded correct? F, silly, G, messy, H, difficult, J, gloomy. If you said F, silly, you are correct. The bee was like, <laughs> caterpillar, what you're saying is silly. I've never heard of such a thing, okay? So again, F, silly is a, another word or synonym for absurd. Let's move to question number five. Which sentence from the story shows that the caterpillar is successful at building a good house for itself? A, every time the caterpillar's head moved, it left behind something that looked like a glistening thread of silk. B, through the veil, you could still faintly see the caterpillar moving. C, the bee came by that way again and stopped to look at the little house. D, it was fast asleep in its little cocoon house knowing not whether the sun shone or the rain beat down. So out of these answer choices, which sentence shows that the caterpillar is successful at building a good house for itself? Okay, so he's built the house. What could show, what answer could show that he built a good house for himself? If you said D, you are correct. It was fast asleep in its little cocoon, not knowing, oh, knowing not whether the sun shone or the rain beat down. And we have, and that is from paragraph 13. So when he built his house, it was such a good house, the caterpillar couldn't tell whether the sun was shining or if it rained, it didn't even beat down or go inside of the cocoon. So D is the correct answer. Let's move to question number six. The author includes sensory language and vivid details in paragraph 15 to illustrate how. 
F, quickly, moths can move. G, beautiful, the caterpillar has become. H, strong, a cocoon can be. J, perfectly, the caterpillar has built the cocoon. So, sensory language and vivid details, you may be thinking to yourself, what? So let me explain. Sensory language and vivid details means that the words that the author is explaining is so real, it's so detailed. They're given so much information that as you're reading the words, it's like you can actually see what they're talking about because they're so um, detailed in the information they're given okay that's what sensory language means that you can see it or you can hear it like for instance if in the story it said and the book went boom you could imagine it like you could see the book saying see the book as it slams down and also you could hear it even though you're reading it it's like you could hear the boom that the that the book made that's sensory language in vivid details that it's so again it's just so detailed the author uses so many words to explain something that you could see it in your mind or you could hear it or sometimes even feel it or even smell it because your senses remember are seeing hearing smelling tasting okay and vivid just means very very detailed now that we know what sensory language and vivid details mean, let's look at paragraph 15. One end of the cocoon was very soft and loose, and through this end, what was once the caterpillar pushed its way out. How weak it felt. Fastened to it on each side were two crumpled wet things which it began to move feebly up and down because it's so weak, it can hardly move its wings. As it moved them, it felt its strength returning and the crumpled things began to spread and dry. Broader and broader, they spread until they were strong, velvety wings, two on each side. They were a lovely soft brown color with a pinkish border along the edges. In the middle of each of the lower wings was a glistening spot like the eye on a peacock's feather. So looking at our answer choices again, let's see which answer gives um, the sensory language and vivid details to illustrate how blank, okay? F, Quickly, moths can move. G, beautiful, the caterpillar has become. H, strong, A. J, perfectly, the caterpillar has built the cocoon. Based on paragraph 15, which of these answers are correct? And, and remember, even though we have the hints along with the questions, whenever you are reading, if it... Uh, points out a specific paragraph go back in the story to read it so that you can see it even if you think oh yeah i remember what what that is just take a moment to look because sometimes you may not remember what exact paragraph number what you think you're remembering is okay again what's the correct answer drum roll please That was cool sound effects. G, beautiful, how beautiful the caterpillar has become. And we've highlighted the information, the sensory language, and also the vivid details that supports that. Broader and broader they spread until they were strong velvety wings, two on each side. They were a lovely soft brown color with a pinkish border along the edges. In the middle of each of the lower wings was a glistening spot like the eye on a peacock's feather. Wow, that is pretty detailed, okay? And that is why we chose G, 
how beautiful the caterpillar has become. This has been Shay Jackson, and this has been the Star Fourth Grade Star Reading Test Prep. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We'd also like to tell you about the Fourth Grade Star Math Boot Camp that's coming up. There's one Sunday, April 29th from 5 to 8 p.m. And also Saturday, May 12th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Both of those links will be in the description box. And this is for the Star Math Boot Camp, okay? Also in the description box will be a link to a coupon code so that you can receive $15 off the Star Math Boot Camp. I had a great time reading this story with you. Talk to you soon.